Welcome back everyone to episode 29 of Let's Play Advanced Tactics Gold. I think things are going to start to flow a little easier now. Um, let's just jump right into the action. We have a little bit of unexplored... We need to recon this, basically, is what I want to say. <clears throat> so I'm going to push some units forward, and there's the vision we want. I think... Infantry, 50 infantry is going to give us significantly more reconnaissance. We can see 33, 30, 38. That changes to 80, around about 80. So that's, you know, almost three times as much reconnaissance. And that's just the nature of these units having 50 and these guys only having, you know, like 14. <clears throat> so more, more or less, it's one recon point per one of these guys. And since all those standard light tanks are super strong, we only have four of them total in a division, whereas we have 50 rifles in our rifle division, so just giving, lots of, uh, giving us a lot of extra recon. Now, I don't see any territory or terrain which will benefit our machine guns to the east. So let's kind of use our machine guns purely for the forest area around here. What can we even do? Well, we can actually move this guy forward and bombard. <clears throat> so we'll just do that. He got two rounds. I know that doesn't seem much. I didn't actually show what he did, but I assume it was a... Uh, well, it hopefully will weaken him up enough that we can actually attack this unit. Again, I don't really need to be attacking, but I would. The only strategic objective I can that like is in my target sites. I don't care at all about this. I'm not even gonna use this one, the tank factories. <clears throat> but this aircraft factory could be really useful. I have enough points, I think next turn for a dive bomber. And um, I'm gonna be saving up for dive bomber and dive bomber two immediately. And dive, bombers, dive bombers will be very useful against the huge amount of armored cars and also the infantry guns that we're facing. <clears throat> they are very good at killing either of those. Okay, so we have this armor. <clears throat> he can also attack. I have a real frog in my throat, sorry. Now he cannot attack. Huh. Interesting. I think we'll do something like this. This guy has a little bit lower readiness, a few less, a little bit less action points. He's a more experienced unit, but um, we're gonna put that guy forward. I think that the five armored divisions that we've thrown forward now are probably more than enough for our our purposes in the east. Hmm, okay, well. Again, I would like to get my machine guns to the south. So let's do that and move this guy, instead of moving him down, let's move him across the river. Put a little bit of extra pressure. It's nice to have one guy across the river, although we'll have to be a little bit careful about supply. He's already at 78. I don't know if he can even squeeze out another hex before he's out of supply. <clears throat> Worst case scenario though, it's very easy for him to cross the river even though supply is difficult, so he can always just jump back across the river. Let's also get these guys to move forward. I guess we'll move them here. This guy's not going to be able to do any bombardment. Let's just get him as far forward as we can, which appears to be here. Same with this guy. I don't... Hmm. Actually, let's just kind of see where he should fit in um, in a second. So, let's see. We have one artillery here. He'll probably bombard here because it'll be very easy for two of my guys to just move one down south to get this guy. Although he could also bombard here with full bombardment. Actually, that's a better idea. Let's get the full bombardment where we're gonna make the most use of it, which is in the fields rather than the forest. And let's move our, do we have any fives here? No. But let's move the best of these guys, so the 145. So we'll have the 145 and the 124 bombard here. It might even be worth bombarding this guy with more. It would take him over the attack stack, but I mean the, the um, battle stack for artillery. But that doesn't make it useless, it's still effective, just not as effective. 
Yeah, because 84, he still has quite a bit of strength. However, okay, the good news is most of that readiness is in the infantry guns. So most of this combat strength is in the infantry guns. And as we remember, infantry guns do not defend very well against infantry. So that's good. Actually, we'll, we don't need to bombard that anymore. We'll probably use the remainder of the bombardment stuff for maybe this forest tax. Probably. Yeah, so let's move the 130 and the 143 down here. Yeah, we'll probably end up bombarding this guy. Let's just do it and we'll be able to see like where we stand. It could be useful for making plans to see how well or how poorly they withstand this bombardment. Okay, well, yeah, actually that's really effective. That was, that's gonna make this definitely an attackable hex. Okay. Hmm. Now we have an interesting situation here. We're basically at a choke point. It would be nice to cut off this area from the south before we bottlenecked because these this hex is going to be a lot easier to take than this one but if we attack this one you have to imagine that they're going to fall back to here unless we i don't know how the retreat mechanic works i think it's that they try to retreat exactly away from the strongest force so maybe i can set up a really strong force here and push them down here which would be fine my goal just being to take this side of the of the stream. Hmm. But oh wow. So this is these guys are pretty weak. I think we can attack these guys as well. We can get, as far as I know, three armor, but one of these guys <clears throat> let's see. Let's take my weaker armor against this guy because he's been bombarded. So let's attack. Ooh, we lost a tank. Woo. I'm not sure. Well, we have tanks in, in spades now. I, I mean, we should have plenty of tanks. So we lost basically four non-replaceable units for 25. That's definitely okay. And who was it who did the attack? Yellow. It was a yellow. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember who it was. Well, let's just do the attack here. Oh, so whoever is supposed to move there can actually attack here instead. Um, oh, well, we know who it was who did the attack because they don't have all their tanks. So let's just move this guy in here. It's fine. He could have done the attack, but I don't see a need to do the attack with only three tanks. We'd be over the battle stack limit anyway. So now we're dealing it with a 35 action points and 57 action points, which means it's likely that this attack will stall because this guy only has 35 action points. Hmm, is there any way we can get this guy involved or something? No. Well, yes, actually. If he moves here, okay, let's do this. It's kind of insane, but we're probably going to want more artillery pushing forward anyway. So let's do this and just get two rounds. This will lower his readiness. Oh, their entrenchment is very good here. I wonder if engineers help entrenchment. Anyways, we lower their readiness just a tad, their entrenchment just a tad. They're pretty well entrenched. That's interesting. I guess we'll just find out how well entrenched. This is plain, so it's not a swamp. It should be infantry without any defense, but one infantry gun up against armor. I don't know why I'm so hesitant. I just feel like this could go poorly, but let's go. Whoa. Yep. Boop. Bup. Victory. Okay, we won. So one of our guys dropped out because of the action points. We kind of guessed that. And we did take some pretty serious casualties, but killing off about 20 engineers. Yeah, I would say this is worth it. We lost seven. We killed off, you know, more or less 40. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, good. So we've taken that hex. I'm not sure who can move in. This guy can't because he fell out. So only this guy can. That's fine. We'll move him in. Might as well. Our push towards the aircraft factory. It's a, it's a real thing. It's happening. Okay, so this guy will be in um, supply even going one more. But that is, if we look here, it's 98. So that'll be his limit. But that's probably fine. If he does, if he moves here next turn and attacks but doesn't move across, He'll help with the attack by 
pr providing an attack side which doesn't take a stream crossing penalty. That'll probably push this guy back across the stream, either here or here. And then he's fine to just move back across the stream. Is there any strategic value for keeping up here? Well, not immediately. If we eventually want to take Mars Marseille, Marseille, I can't remember. It's so weird. I can't remember how to say this city. I think it's Marseille. If we want to take this city, though, uh, it will be useful to have a few units in the north. However, it looks like we can get those units to the north just by moving through the roads here. Now, this is going to be hell. Remember, low mountains do give hide points, so sometimes, especially if you have armor moving along the road, who will still get the attack penalty moving into low mountains, even though they can move along the road. <sighs> it's just very treacherous. I would like to take an extra gun factory, because right now I'm actually a little bit low on anti-tank and artillery. I want to get all my divisions up to 5 and 5 for artillery, and I'd like to be able to have a reserve of anti-tank guns, which... Currently, I don't. So we look at my Supreme Headquarters. We don't have any anti-tank guns. In fact, I think we only have two total in yellow. So, no, we have two in red and two in yellow. Okay, I stand corrected. Yeah, two and two. Hmm. Okay, well, that's a little bit better than I thought. Right. So, let's transfer the art artillery that we have here to the units that they want to go to which I guess would just obviously be the two yellow ones. So we'll do this transfer. So transfer that and a horse because they've already bombarded. So there's no reason to preserve their action points. Good. Now that's going to save this guy a little bit of movement. Oh, okay. Now the horses will be able to pull the AT gun still. Oh, we do have a, st uh, a new light tank division here too as well. So let's get that going. I don't know if he'll be useful this turn, but... Okay, there she is. Our 14th Light Armor Division. So that's actually really impressive. And this guy can get all the way over here. Wow. Uh, it's probably where we'll want him. There's a lot of forest here. We'll leave it to our infantry to clear out those areas. So yeah, we'll put him all the way forward. Great. So now this is a pretty light division. Um, is there any place where we think we'll need the AT guns? Because it's better to get rid of this stuff now before I start moving forward. However, it's also better to attack with things <laughs> so we lose so that they lose action points before we add another unit to them because then they won't be able to move at all. But the trade-off being that if I wait to move, if I move this one forward first, we'll have better proximity before our attack. So probably we'll just move forward. Yeah, I mean, this costs 30 per movement for our infantry regardless, so we're not really even doing poorly. In fact, the only thing that's keeping us from moving forward is one submachine gun. Okay, well, we can solve that. If we move this guy, I think we'll move him here and probably do something like this. So let's transfer the one last submachine gun. to there, get him there, and we can move our um, headquarters one more forward. Good, very good, very good. All right. Um, what else do we have? Okay, so we have some units in the back. We'll try to keep the yellows moving east, and we'll consider, I'm gonna leave this red in reserve for the time being just because we'll probably move him, we'll probably will want to move him south. Infantry. We still will need a bunch of infantry in the south to cut off the French here. This yellow, though. Interesting. It costs 50 to move there. Ah, yes, because it's enemy territory and zone of control. So 30 plus 10 plus 10. 50. And we only have 40. We could get rid of that if we were able to talk attack this hex, but we simply can't. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's... Uh, oh, we don't have access to this one yet. When we do, we're just going to do the same thing, set the production to zero. We have eight tanks coming in per turn, and that's already more than I need. I mean, I am able to make some partial use of these, but basically, I probably don't want any more tanks to go in at all. What we'll do is, let's see, I have yet another tank division. So I know that we, I mean, it's ridiculous. We already had five 
armor divisions moving forward. So this is five, six. We have six armor in, in like these five hexes. That's a lot of armor. Um, the most you can have, obviously, is two per hex because that's the most that you want for battle stack reasons. We have another one here. They'll actually probably engage in the fight here. Yeah, that's where he'll go. So one of these guys is going to want to move over here. Preferably if we can get an attack from normal infantry. Yeah. So we'll do this, and that way this guy will be able to get attacked from three sides. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I think at this point we'll just um, be interested in replenishing the light tanks. Just spread some love to the different headquarters. We'll probably, in that case, we won't create any more divisions, but what I'll do is I'll sign up one of these for yellow and one of them for gray. And then next turn I'll switch this yellow over to red just to give red some spare tanks. Actually, I, oh, I think I am going to make this a light tank um, division before the end of the turn, so yeah, we won't have any left over there. I mean, I, I could if I wanted. I don't think this is ready. It's still red, so it's not going to give us full amount of light tanks anyways. It would give us three, which is... I don't really care about the leftovers. Yeah, we'll wait. We'll wait one more turn. So... I think that's going to be fine. We need this guy to be... Re we lost another tank somewhere, I thought. We haven't done any attacks on the south, so it was up here. Yeah, it was just this one then that lost the tank. Okay. So it's a red. Oh, well. That sells it then. I guess red is the people. Is the one who should get this. There. That settles it. <clears throat> All right, so let's do this attack. We know what we want to do. Armor, armor, and infantry. That went very well. We killed 40 infantry for the cost of one. All right, I think we move the armor in. Yes. Yes, we do. I don't know if we move the infantry in. We won't do anything for the time being because we're not sure. All right, so if we want to do an attack here, it seems logical for the attack to be from here, this machine gun, and no, these guys will get a lot of penalties in the forest, so probably this guy. Yeah. We could actually attack from a fourth side, which, hey, why not, right? To do that, though, let's try to get like these rangers. That's perfect. Interestingly... We may want to do an attack here before all is said and done. So do we really need more than, hmm. This is only two mortars. What I'm going to do is have them contribute to the attack here. So we'll have the mortars, these guys, the uh, these guys, sorry, and then these guys. Uh, you know what I could have done? I could have moved these guys over. Actually, I still can. So this guy can move over here. He'll be the unit I do the attack with. So this one, this one, this one, and still the last one. Good. And we did take some casualties, so I think it was a good idea to attack from the fourth side. And that's a very defendable point. Good, they even retreated back here, which is even better because, hey, I can, I can attack that. Interesting. This guy can attack here. Can any? Can this machine gun attack? Oh, we might do another attack even. This guy can't, but that makes sense. Yeah, the only thing he could do is move here. Since he can do that, we probably will do that. Uh, no, because this is supposedly going to be behind enemy. This is going to be behind the front by the end of this turn if we do two attacks. Now these guys, we might actually try to bombard them because they are pretty far forward. So what I'll do is, we know we're going to bombard these guys. Let's bombard these guys with our best. Okay, we have one artillery here. Let's use him. Let's use our five, which gives us six, so we can use probably our best artillery with four. That gives us a total of ten. 
Perfect. Hopefully we kill at least one. Uh, no. <laughs> Never. It's very hard to kill those armor cars with artillery. We've decimated their forces otherwise. But, hmm. Yeah, because what I'm considering doing here is actually moving these units forward. Doing a transfer of one of these guys to give them AT guns just, like, for safety. And then uh, moving their artillery forward. How much will it cost? It'll cost, they'll only get three bombardment turns, but these guys are probably pretty highly entrenched. So let's just do it. Let's not talk. Let's talk more action. Transfer, transfer, and also the horses. Good. So that's a defendable point. 75 action points, or 75 readiness for our two anti-tank guns. That's good against armored cars that are already pretty low readiness. I think we would be able to hold up reasonably well. Good, that means that these guys can now move in. It's a little insane, but now they can stretch over and get bombardment done. Two, three, boom. That's incredible. So you can see our the entrenchment was taken down by almost a factor of four. Divided by four, like that's very good. Look at these guys are down from like 18 to nine. So very good. So now we'll do the attack with everyone who can, which is two sides, it's perfect. This guy's done a lot of attacking this turn, and unfortunately, he's probably going to be the weakest link on this line when the turn is over. But that's fine, it's forced, and we're not worried about anything behind him anyway. Very good. E exceptional. So this turn is working out really well. <clears throat> Almost surprisingly so, too. Um, we weren't expecting it to work quite so well. Okay, so now this is an obvious attack, <coughs> which we already knew. We already were planning to attack that. So who can attack him? Currently just one guy. Let's fix that. Let's get this infantry to help out. Or actually, let's get these guys, because the, the, the other ones, the ones to the northeast should shift east. These are the ones who should attack here. So let's get him to help. Do the attack with both those guys. Oh, well, they're in the same hacks. I should have moved him south, but that's fine. It just gives us a 5% 5 concentric bonus or not. Eh, whatever. Looks like we didn't need it. I ah, my voice um, feels really scratchy, so I'm sorry if it sounds that way too. Hmm, interesting. We actually see that the Germans have occupied this area. Well, I mean, we know that because the territory is known, but they have a headquarters all the way over here. Fascinating. I mean, these guys have zero action points, but they're not grayed out. I'm not, I don't fully understand that. Usually they gray out when they can't do anything. But whatever. We won't worry ourselves about it. That's actually cool. To transfer the AT guns across, what we actually did was they just moved themselves. Because you can see that they actually still have action points, which means that <laughs> they moved themselves across the river. Just It cost quite a lot of movement points. I guess it takes 10 plus 60, so it took 70 for them to jump across the stream and across to this end of the fields, which is cool. So that they actually still have action points left. Can this guy move? He could. I don't think there's a reason to do that, though. We would like them to move there, if anything. So, Okay, well, let's just keep working our way down. We know we have some artillery bombardment to have. we want to have happen here. Um, do we want any more attacks? Like, this is obviously a pretty juicy target for an attack. But I would prefer to bombard it, especially being planes. Now, remember, their um, anti, their armor is not going to be able to move here or here. So the only place they can move besides attacking is here. <clears throat> now, it is across the stream, into a forest, and with an enemy zone of control. Will they have enough action points? Forest is 50. Stream is 30. And an enemy zone control is 10, so it looks like they would. It's a little unfortunate, but 
<clears throat> that's fine. Okay, so where are we gonna share up our lines? I think this guy should move here. It's pretty natural. He's machine guns, so forest and armored uh, anti-tank to defend against the armored car threat. We want AT guns here, for sure. In fact, mm, okay, here's some more anti-tank guns. And they're red, so they should move south anyway. Hmm. I guess we'll move the red south uh, here, probably, and the yellow here. Oh, all the way over here. Yeah, these guys just don't have enough action points. That's quite a few people that we have in this hex, but it's the staging location for this turn. Okay, uh, last few people to move forward. Mm -hmm. Probably here to give us some anti-tank defense here. And you can see how weak they are. Nobody is able to get another attack off, but that's a very weak hex. And lastly, this guy, he does have AT guns, so probably... Oh! Okay, this is interesting. We're at 57 here. This guy can actually take this hex, and we'll want him to do so. Fantastic. And he should be in supply, which was my quick calculation there. And nobody can join him, but I think I'm pretty happy with that. 50 rifles, AT gun, not that he'll need it because he's in a swamp, but unfortunately being in a swamp means lower entrenchment, so if the infantry do choose to attack him, it's like to your advantage to be in a swamp if you're fighting armor, but a disadvantage if you're fighting, if you're trying to dig in, so. Good, we have one more red. Let's try to move the red south. Yeah, I think it's obvious then. Okay, good. So done up here. That line's held. Let's move this um, machine gun unit forward. Plymouth does not need to be defended anymore. Okay, and here we go. So let's see. I think we'll attack with this guy. Um, let's do this guy. So he's slightly weaker. Okay, that was an easy kill. No, no need to look at that. Move here. Right, so we want this engineer to build the road, and that should complete our road. So they've taken this hex currently, but we'll be able to get it back well, probably right now. We'll just slide these rangers forward here. We'll do some bombardment too. So let's just move this guy. Oh, well, actually, I think I'm just not going to bombard this guy with as many people as I could. We'll just leave these five, and hopefully they get the job done. Okay, yeah, that was pretty good. The entrenchment's all gone. Readiness is decimated. Good, so let's do this attack. We can do it from four sides. Actually, what I'm going to do is create a new formation here. Probably the last armored division I'm going to create for a little while. Let's just stack up probably like four um, tanks per headquarters. And then, let's see, what do I need? Machine guns. And then turn off armor production, because we're sitting pretty high and mighty on the armor right now. And I don't want every playthrough I do just to be like, hey, here's how great armor is, <laughs> even though it's very effective. So this will be probably a unit which attacks north, yes. So this one will attack from here. This gun will attack from here, here, and here. We're using none of the anti-tank guys, because there's no anti-tank. Oh, there's no tanks to anti. <laughs> so that was very effective. We'll move in this guy and this guy. I don't know if we'll want to move the armor in. This guy obviously should move in as well. Uh, we gotta move this armor here anyway, so they'll probably do that. Let's see. I want these engineers to move forward because their next step is going to be to reconnect this bridge. Now, these machine guns can't attack, but I think we'll have them kind of preserve territory. Because there's no reason for them to all just stick in here. Start spreading them out, forming a line. We have a very well defended area against these Germans. And these guys are cut off and really low readiness. It's a bit overkill. But that's okay. 
We have a huge number of units right now, so many. We can probably cut back on unit production too, but I'll think about that more next turn off camera. All right, so we have a bunch of units here. Let's move this 71 up here. And that means both of these guys are probably fine to start moving up to the front. Yeah, I think so. Let's get them both moving. The 87 let's keep here to do an attack on the armored cars because we have three total anti-tank weapons, which is good. Actually, hmm. Yeah, there's nothing better we can do, so we'll move these guys forward as well. Is there anything for us to bombard down here? I think we'll be better off bombarding Vilberg. So let's see what we get done there. Not a whole lot. Uh, their entrenchment is very high. We won't be attacking them on this turn. So let's see, this guy can move here, this guy can move forward. Hmm. <clears throat> now the question is, where do we want to swing our different units? So we can very well defend this Swamp Hex with our AT guns. I think that makes sense to do. It would be probably wise for us to also reinforce it with a few submachine guns. So let's do that, I think. Okay, so that means that these machine guns can be part of whatever is going on up here. This tank, yeah, I guess we'll keep them there as defense. Good, we have anti-tank guns. Probably what I'm going to do is move this guy forward one. I'm actually going to use the artillery, which I'm going to transfer to other units at the end of this turn, but since I'm I'm giving them at the beginning of this turn, I might as well take advantage of their action points. So let's bombard this one with everyone, including the headquarter units. And even though they'll have zero action points, that doesn't stop me from transferring them to another headquarters. If anything, we're just giving them some free experience as well. And that was very effective. Yeah, we cut down on these guys a lot. I'm even seeing the possibility of doing an attack here, an attack here, surrounding these guys and killing them. And if we're able to do that, that seems like a good idea. Now, the, these tanks are done for this turn, so that's fine. They won't be able to contribute. But let's try to see if we can get this other attack going up. So these guys have 90 action points and they're armored so we're expecting them to do a lot of work for us. Let's use the non um, armor for the attacks against the not tanks. I want the better unit here so I'll have to take that one. Okay, let's do it. Very good. Fantastic. The almost another unit survived. Just one rifle, one infantry gun. So we're going to push this armor forward, and also the one who attacked. Eh, that might not have been a good idea, but that's fine. I already did it, which is a mistake. Yes, I think it's a mistake. We wanted to only move the anti-tank guns forward, because that leaves this guy undefended. I mean, we don't need the extra attack stack penalty here. So anyway, it doesn't matter. Maybe I'll just move this guy up to reinforce there. I don't know. Uh, okay, so this tank can still attack, but if he attacks here, he can't. Can I get any of these guys to attack this six? No, huh? Yes. Okay, I think I'm going to do it. So I'm moving this unit forward because... He can get an attack in. I can use just these two guys. My hope is that their readiness is low enough that I don't need to use my armor. And I'm going to use my armor against these guys to finish them off. Yeah, let's do it. So let's do this attack from these guys. Okay, yeah, it looks like it's going to work. Good. So we lost five guys, but we killed 20. So I don't think I'm even going to move in there. We'll just kind of use that as a surrounding point for the attack here. Now, for the attack here, we're obviously going to want to move some people around. Let's see. 
<clears throat> yeah, let's move these guys forward. Or should I move these guys forward? We know that both these anti-tank guns are going to want to end up in here to defend the hex. Okay, let's do it this way then. We'll attack with all. We'll disengage the machine guns. And that's four hexes. Four were a little bit over the attack stack penalty. That's because these units, anti-tank gun units, um, have a bit of extra battle stack. They're a little bit over 50. I could do this instead, though. Attack with one of these. That would free up. But this guy, he's probably better off going north, so let's just do it as I was originally planning. And just take off the machine gun and do the attack. Yeah, we're so overwhelming them, it didn't matter. <clears throat> we only lost one ranger, which is fantastic. I mean, we killed almost 70 units. No, we, we did kill 70 units. At the cost of one. I know I've had one time here, like a 200 for zero, but <laughs> that's such an anomaly. When you get a, a 70 to one, you're still very happy. Good, so let's move both of these guys in. And it does show us that we could, if we want, put these AT guns, which are pretty good, into this hex. So I'm gonna be a little bit crazy and actually do that. I'm just kind of provoking them. I could even cut them off. Oh, this is crazy. Crazy talk, but it is a possibility. Oh man, this guy can't get any further forward unless I was to displace him. Unfortunately, none of these guys in this hex can do any movement at all. I could attack. Obviously, this would be a terrible idea. It would be like 150 against 150, and I haven't even bombarded them to remove entrenchment. I could attack from here, though, but I think it's better off for me to do the attack on this guy with both armor to really blow them out of the water. So it just doesn't look like my engineers will be able to get there this turn. We need to get to that bridge, so moving south or whatever, that doesn't help at all. We're, this is as close as we can get. Which means next turn, one, two, three, we'll be able to get here. Which, the good news is, we'll be able to get it done in two turns. And being here or being here, one, two, three, doesn't help us get it built any faster, turn-wise. It just means what... Since we didn't get here, we'll have less action points left over when we actually build it. So, Okay, well, good. Um, let's see. There's If there's nobody available to attack this unit, and I'm almost sure we can't because we started back here. So we've really pushed pretty far forward. No reason to attack that guy. Let's just attack this guy with both of our armor units. Really blow him up. Good. Not even going to look. Move that guy forward. Leave this guy as kind of a defense... I think. So this is the question. Can he get here? Oh, he can. Okay, in that case, although they there is a way they... No, they won't have enough action points. They can't wheel them, themselves that far forward. So we'll move in with both the armor here. Good. This armor isn't even needed here. It's probably wise to leave him there just because he's defense. Oh, let's move these tanks forward then. Yeah, in that case, let's move these guys forward here. I really like that. I really like this whole turn. Now, what's a good place for this guy? Ironically, I think to move him into the swamp. No, actually, let's move him. He's going to be a unit we can attack with next turn when they if they fall back into the forest. Probably, I should just say, when they fall back into the forest. So we'll move him all the way up here, which is going to increase our attack stack penalty here, but we have tanks and anti-tank guns, so I'm just hoping that they aren't so crazy as to want to attack that. In a similar vein, I think it's wise for us to move these machine guns forward because they're going to be in positions to do attacks next turn. All right, so we're kind of at the limit, the place where I would like to stop this video. Let me just quickly get these two done. Oh, uh, come on. Yeah, okay, good. Wow, he didn't even lose anybody. Oh, uh, he only retreated, though. We really would like, actually, to do a follow-up attack because he's down to one readiness, and he'll actually increase that back to 10 next turn. 
So let's do another attack and see if we can kill him. There, perfect. Just as I wanted. We won't move him forward, no reason, and we'll leave everybody where they are. Okay, so what do we do here? I don't think we need to do any attacks. I mean, this is a very well-defended hex. So what we'll probably do is... Well, the, the machine guns here should definitely shift forward. They can probably hold a hex by themselves. Now, we have a lot of machine guns, though, so we should start sending some of our machine guns around to help surround Velberg. So this is 50, we'll do that. And then we'll also move some here and here. Hopefully the 83s will, uh, let's do this. That way I can move this armor. Yeah, we can attack this unit, that's good. We'll attack it with both, why not? They do, as far as I remember, have a lot of gun factories down here. Yeah. They have four gun factories. Like I said, I just have no idea how they get the political points for doing that. Because they're actually up to infantry gun twos as well. But that's fine. Um, let's see. We probably don't want to move both of these guys out. So this guy can't do anything. Let's just move this one forward. Because he can do a follow-up attack. I think that's a wise idea. Yep, there it is. But we won't actually move anybody forward. We're just kind of shifting some units into position. And that's probably all we want to do for this turn. Good, so the last step is to transfer some of our artillery around. We want to make sure that there's no artillery actually in here first. So yeah, let's transfer the existing artillery there. So we don't lose the readiness. And they've already got rid of their ar artillery. I think... Who needs the anti-tank guns at this point? Probably the gray. So what I'm going to do is actually transfer one anti-tank gun back from yellow. Let's use the rail cap. Oh, this guy could move forward if I get rid of this anti-tank gun that I just stupidly gave. Well, uh, is there anybody who wants it? <laughs> Let's just do a quick trade real fast to this artillery. It's, this is gonna be a little weird. We're gonna transfer this anti-tank gun here. <laughs> um, now let's transfer the artillery. That's what we were planning on doing to begin with, yeah. So we'll transfer two up here. Two and two horses. Also here we'll do... Oh, whoops, this is the same. <laughs> Silly. Two and two horses. Good. Now that means this guy can actually move forward, which is, wow, he can move forward a good amount. And we'll do that. Because it's not going to make the battle, um, the distance any longer for anybody who's um, above this line, at or above this line. So for all these people, the distance has stayed the same. These guys, the distance has gotten a little worse, but I mean, they're not in a serious combat situation anyway, so it's fine. Now let's actually transfer um, these units back though, that one AT gun, because we do actually want it. It's, readiness is probably abysmal now, <laughs> readiness of 14. That's okay though. Um, our guys move forward far enough, we probably won't need to have him move any further forward next turn, which is good. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, well, that's, that's it. We can't. So this guy also has... No, he doesn't have any anti-tank guns. So we have one anti-tank gun here and one anti-tank gun here. The two artillery are new, two artillery new. Okay, good. All right, so let's end the turn. Hope I didn't forget anything. We'll see very soon if I did. Okay, an attack. Um, it doesn't look like it was successful. Two attacks already. Um, that was a successful attack. But they still retreat back to the forest. That's interesting. So, wow. Huge, huge forces. That's probably the three anti-tank guns. So it's actually a good thing that we decided last turn to switch our, our production to build four AT guns and two, anti, uh, and two artillery. 
we'll probably continue that trend. So let's attach this one to the headquarters, but we're going to set his production to zero as well. Um, even this one's still apparently not at a 8,000. All right, so let's look and see what the attacks were. They attacked us here. We lost two machine guns and they lost uh, a lot, a lot, a lot. Next, they tried to attack us here. That's a reasonable place to attack us. We only have one division, but again, our machine guns on the defense are just doing so much work as we expect them to do. That's what they're there for, to defend our light take units on the, on the attacks, on the counterattacks. And we eliminated 11, 40 staff. Why are they attacking the staff? That's very silly. And 10 engineers. So just a really stupid attack from the AI. Unfortunately, that's, that's just an unfortunate situation where the AI just doesn't really know what it's doing. Um, it's going to make this game like a little too easy, I think, if they do those attacks on us. Okay, good. So we had anti-tank guns here, three of them. And the armored cars took some serious losses. So we only lost three riflemen for the three armored cars. Very acceptable. Now we know since things went so well in the last few fights that these are not going to go as well. And we can see it didn't. So they attacked, even though we had four anti-tank guns, I'm very upset about that. It seems like anti-tank guns aren't doing their job. That's exactly what they're there for. They should be just ripping armored cars apart. Armored cars don't even get an attack bonus against, this is considered, considered um, artillery, not a tank. So even armored cars on the attack don't really get a huge bonus against artillery. I'll show you that in a sec. Anyways, doesn't matter. For whatever reason, we took enormous casualties here. 60 rangers, 3 anti-tanks, 3 horses. So, even still, it looks like they had enough movement points to get their armored car back into the forest still. And that brings us to the final attack. They did attack against our submachine guns. I was a little worried about that because submachine guns don't defend very well in the open. That's why I was trying to keep some ranger units to defend. However, we weren't, oh, they were actually successful. Did they choose to move in? Wow, so they took another 67 casualties attacking my tank unit, which also had some submachine guns. Oh man, another attack. Okay, so uh, this was um, just some minor losses to my supporting units for the tank. Wow, they did a lot of attacks and they did decide to move forward. Oh, they even did land artillery bombardment. So their um, infantry guns too can do bombardment from one hex away. They're a mild form of artillery. Okay, so let's just quickly showcase what I was talking about. These armored cars, oops. South mobile, uh, oh sorry, artillery. So you can see that they attack at 300, defend at 200 against artillery, compared to 450, 300 against armor. So compare this 300, 200. So they're attacking at 300 with 2,000 hit points. Um, but my anti-tank guns are defending. I can just do this comparison directly. So my armor, my... Um, Anti-tank guns are going to target armor first. They defend at 1800, whereas an armored car attacks at 300 for soft mobile, because that's what this is considered. Oh, I'm sorry, um, for artillery, 300. <clears throat> Which means that they should have six armored cars for every anti-tank. If I go back to this battle, They didn't have 24 armored cars. So I just feel like we were in a slight advantage, but that doesn't that neglects even entrenchment and things like that, which we should have also had. Huh. Not much entrenchment because it was no, it was fields, so it would have had some entrenchment. Oh uh, well. Well, that's going to conclude this episode, another long one. Um we'll get faster maybe eventually. <laughs> Until the next episode, though, and until my next try at moving a little faster, thanks for watching, and take care.